In this video, we're gonna go ahead and review with something called the Gaussian integral. This is a very special integral that is heavily used in stats, physics, and engineering courses. And I have to admit, and you can look back when people have asked me what is my least favorite integral, and this one used to be it because a lot of people already know that this is gonna be equal to the square root of pi, but where does it actually come from? And that's exactly what we're gonna to review today. So before we get started, I'm gonna assume that you have some basic understanding of calculus. I mean, if you're watching my channel, that's probably gonna be the case, but we're gonna go ahead and solve this using a double integral. We're gonna use polar form, and of course, if we're doing that, we need to know something about the Jacobian. So before we start, just imagine that this particular function right here looks sort of like this. And if we're taking the integral from negative pi to pi, we're really trying to take the area underneath this curve. Now, why is that important? Well, it sort of mimics a very um, common phenomenon that you see, especially in stats, I think of like the normal distribution. But the way we're gonna go ahead and solve this is we're gonna just make our integral i, we're gonna equal the integral from negative pi to pi of e to the negative x squared, whoops, we're gonna have a dx and we're gonna square this. Okay, so what is that gonna do to our integral? Well, it's gonna basically separate this into negative pi or negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared with respect to x times another integral negative infinity to infinity of e to the negative. And I'm just gonna change the variables because again, these are just dummy variables, but it's gonna really change everything here. Because now what we have is a double integral. We can go ahead and combine this. And I would love for people to go in the comments and let me know why or what theorem allows me to do this to kind of move things around. But this is gonna become e to the negative x squared plus or minus y squared with respect to x and with respect to y. Now, let's talk about this real quick. If I factor out a negative, this is gonna become negative x squared plus y squared. Okay, this is a now a, a very special function. It's actually in 3D and I'm gonna put it up on the screen. Hopefully, maybe you can see it uh, up here on the top right. But now that we're taking a double integral, we're actually trying to take the volume of this surface right here. And this extends uh, infinitely on the x and y direction, but we're gonna try to take the volume. I noticed that I needed uh, a parenthesis there. And the way we're gonna do that is, I don't think we know how to integrate this with respect to x and y, so we're gonna change this into polar coordinates because I see an x squared and a y squared. So we're gonna use the fact that x is equal to r cosine theta, y is equal to r sine theta, and then uh, x squared plus y squared is equal to r squared. And that's gonna be helpful because this, this x squared plus y squared is now equal to r squared. So we're gonna substitute that in. And now, looking back at the image of this graph, because we're trying to take the volume from negative infinity to infinity in the x direction, and the volume from negative infinity to uh, infinity in the y direction, the way we uh, translate that in polar coordinates is now our, um, our radius, I guess you can say, is now gonna be from zero to infinity. So just imagine like if uh, you're sitting uh, on a 2D plane, you're extending it from zero to infinity, you're going all the way here, and our theta is now gonna change from zero to two pi. So just imagine like you have this infinite extension of a radius, and then now it's circling from zero to two pi. So you're basically covering everything that you can imagine from negative infinity to infinity, and that's exactly what our new parameters are gonna be. So now what we have is we're gonna have the uh, integral from zero to infinity, and then the integral from zero to two pi of e to the negative, and as I mentioned, this is gonna be r squared, and now we're taking this with respect to theta and with respect to r. If you notice, I mean, to a lot of people who have not taken um, uh, multivariable calculus, this is sort of correct. I mean, it looks fine because now it's in terms of polar coordinates. But what happens here is we have to take something called the Jacobian because if, if we're gonna change our variables, the idea is that as we translate in terms of x and y and r and theta, every single uh, section or every single small sector, I guess, is now gonna change uh, by a, some factor and we need to find that and that's how we use the Jacobian. 
So this is a Jacobian. It means that if we're gonna go ahead and change our variables into polar form, we need to find that factor that it stretches by. And it's determined by uh, the determinant of these terms. So you have the partial derivative of x with respect to r, partial derivative of x with respect to theta, and then we have this for y in terms of r, and then in terms of theta. So in this particular case, the partial derivative of x with respect to r, so remember what, if we're taking a partial derivative, we're treating every other uh, variable as a constant. So in this case, this is a constant, so you have r times a constant, so we just have cosine. And then now as we take the partial derivative with respect to theta, r is now my, um, my constant. So when we take the derivative, we get negative 2r sine theta, and then we continue doing the same thing for my y. So when we take the partial derivative with respect to r, we're just gonna get sine theta, and then on this side, it's gonna be r cosine theta. There's so many good videos here on YouTube that kind of explains the Jacobian. And to be honest, I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I know that's the definition. So if you guys know of any good videos, uh, please let me know in the comments. Otherwise, I'm also going to uh, link up some videos that I have watched that sort of are helping me understand what this is. But anyway, as we take the determinant, we're just going to have our cosine square theta minus, and then ooh, I don't know where that two came in. I'm so sorry. It just was a uh, negative R sine theta. I'm sure someone already saw that and was screaming at the screen. Um, so we have minus and then the product of this, which is negative R sine square theta. So it's just plus R sine square theta. If you factor out an R, you get R cosine square theta plus sine square theta. And then now we just have R. And this is now our Jacobian. So now we know that as we change Okay, there we go. That's a better R. So now we know that as we change our variables from um, X and Y to polar form, it is uh, the, every single sector is going to be stretching by a factor of R. So that's what we're going to have in here. Now we're going to have our Jacobian R, D theta dr. I believe that's how I'm doing it. Yes, because we started from zero to pi. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take the integral with respect to theta. So we have integral from zero to infinity of, this is just going to be theta e to the negative R squared R from zero to two pi d r. Okay, uh, as we plug in two pi in here, we're just gonna have two pi minus, and then you're gonna plug in zero, that's zero. So that just goes away. So now we have integral from zero to pi of two pi, and then I'm just gonna put the r in the front, e to the negative r squared, and then with respect to r. So now it's just gonna be a simple integral, and we're gonna solve this using u substitution. Let's go ahead and make u equal to r squared. Our du is now two r, dr, okay, as we change this, don't forget our parameters are gonna change because now it's in terms of r. So when u is equal to zero, which is our lower parameter, r is also gonna equal to zero. And then when u is equal to infinity, and not really equal, I know that's bad, but it's like approaches infinity, then uh, r is also gonna approach infinity, but I'm just gonna put equal infinity. Okay, so that's the change in parameters that we're gonna go ahead and use. And as we do that, let's put it up here. Okay, so now we have integral from zero to infinity, still, and then we have uh, two pi times r e to the negative u, and then times our differential dr. dr is gonna be du over two r, so d u over two r. You'll notice that the twos cancel out, the r's cancel out, which is really nice. Integral from zero to pi, or zero to infinity, of pi e to the negative u du. And that's gonna be pretty simple because that's just gonna be a negative e to the negative u. And eh, I'll put the pi, negative pi, e to the negative u from zero to infinity. Okay, so let's check this out. When you plug in infinity, you have, actually I'll just write it out, negative pi e to the negative infinity. And again, I probably shouldn't be doing that, but at this point, we don't have to put the limits. Um, I don't know why, I just decide not to, minus negative pi e to the negative zero. Okay, you have a negative infinity that goes on the bottom, so it's just gonna become zero. That's gonna go away. And then this right here, e to the negative zero, is just one, but you have a negative on here as well, so this is gonna become positive pi. So what we found so far is that this integral here that we had squared is just gonna equal to pi. So here we have our final step. Again, we found that this integral squared was equal to pi, so if we take the square root, we get that the integral from negative uh, infinity to infinity of e to the negative x squared with respect to x is gonna equal to root 
pi, and that is the Gaussian integral. One other thing that we can add to this is this is an even function, so we can say that the integral from zero to pi of e to the negative x squared dx is just gonna be half of the integral from negative infinity to infinity. Did I say pi again? I think I meant zero to infinity. I'm sorry, guys. But anyway, this is gonna be root pi over two because it's just half of it. So these are two really good properties when it um, comes to the Gaussian integral and something that shows up many, many times whenever you're, whenever you're trying to do a more difficult uh, integration problems. And that's all I have for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Please consider subscribing to my channel. Follow me on Instagram and on TikTok where I'm posting a lot more content that you can follow along and challenge yourself practicing every single day. I'll see you in the next one.